A famous statue of Milarepa brought from Nyanang Felgailing Monastery, Tibet Jetson Milarepa was a Tibetan Siddha, who was famously known as a murderer when he was a young man, before turning to Buddhism and becoming a highly accomplished Buddhist disciple. He is generally considered one of Tibet's most famous yogis and spiritual poets, whose teachings are known among several schools of Tibetan Buddhism. He was a student of Marpa Lozawa, and a major figure in the history of the Kakyu school of Tibetan Buddhism. He is also famous for the feat of climbing Mount Kailash. Overlooking Pelgailing Gampa at Milarepa's cave, Tibet. The nine-story tower that Milarepa single-handedly built, Sekar Gutak, Lo Drag, Tibet. Milarepa's life story is famous in Tibetan culture, and retold many times. The best-known biography, The Life of Milarepa, written by Tsangyun Haruka in the 15th century and drawing from older biographies, is still very popular. Most of the present-day stories on Milarepa come from this single source, with oral lineage predominating as well as relics including his bearskin coat. While very little, is known, about him as a historical person at all, Milarepa is venerated by all Tibetan schools as an exemplar of religious dedication and mastery, and his life story established the lineage of the Kakyu sect, and its key figures. According to the life of Milarepa, Milarepa was born in western Tibet to a prosperous family. When his father died, his family was deprived of their wealth by his aunt and uncle. At his mother's request, Milarepa left home and studied sorcery to take revenge, killing many people. Later he felt sorrow about his deeds, and became student of Marpa the translator. Before Marpa would teach Milarepa, he had him undergo abuse and trials, such as letting him build and then demolish three towers in turn. Milarepa was asked to build one final multi-story tower by Marpa at Low Drag, which still stands. Eventually, Marpa accepted him, explaining that the trials were a means to purify Milarepa's negative karma. Marpa transmitted tantric initiations and instructions to Milarepa, including Tummo, the oral transmissions, and Mahamudra. Marpa told Milarepa to practice solitary meditation in caves and mountain retreats, which, according to the biography, after many years of practice resulted in a deep experiential realization about the true nature of reality. In some other sources, it is said that Milarepa and Marpa both came to India to seek one most important thing for ultimate realization from Marpa's guru, but even he didn't know about it. Later on he tried for many years and finally attained enlightenment. Thereafter he lived as a fully realized yogi, and eventually even forgave his aunt, who caused his family's misfortune. According to Lopez, the life of Milarepa represents Buddhism as it was understood and practiced in Tibet in the 15th century, projected back in time, and contains many of the key terms and doctrines of Buddhism. Sangyun Haruka did his best to establish a lineage of teachers which connects the Kakyu tradition with the Indian Siddha tradition. Portraying Marpa as a student of Naropa, though Naropa had already died when Marpa went to India. Lopez notes that Sangyun Haruka used stylistic elements from the biography of Gotama Buddha to portray Milarepa effectively as a Tibetan Buddha, born and enlightened. In Tibet, without going to India or receiving the direct instructions of an Indian master, the life story of Milarepa portrays the rapid method of the tantric path, in which liberation is gained in one lifetime. It describes how Milarepa practiced the generation stage and completion stage, to achieve Mahamudra, spontaneous realization of the most profound nature of mind. Yet, in his instructions to his Tibetan audiences, Milarepa refers to the basic Buddhist teachings of impermanence, the sufferings of samsara, the certainty of death and the uncertainty of its arrival, the frightful rebirth that is the direct result of our benighted deeds. But, his own life also is an example that even a murderer can transform into a Buddha. Lopez further notes that the life of Milarepa portrays two parallel worlds, a profane world and a sacred world, which are ultimately one, showing that the world itself is sacred. Gampopa was Milarepa's most renowned student. Four of Gampopa's students founded the four major branches of the Kakyu lineage, Varam Kakyu, Karma Kakyu, Phagdra Kakyu, and Shalpa Kakyu. Another of Milarepa's students, the Yogi Richungpa, brought several important transmissions into the Karma Kakyu lineage. Along with Gampopa, Richungpa was a teacher of the first Karmapa Dusam Kainpa. Upon meeting Dusam Kainpa, Gampopa told his students, he is pretending to be a disciple of mine in order to hold my lineage for future sentient beings. But in actuality, he has already accomplished the goal of the path. Milarepa Statue, Pango Chorten, Gyansi, Tibet. The acclaimed spiritual poetry of Milarepa is known of as the Hundred Thousand Songs. Previous biographies of Milarepa were enlarged with religious poetry and song cycles, which doubled the volume of biographical information. 
collected for publication in English translation by the Oriental Studies Foundation in 1962. In 1999 these songs were republished in a separate volume entitled The Hundred Thousand Songs of Milarepa Translated and Annotated by Garma C. C. Chang. Then in 2017 a new translation by Christopher Stagg of the Nidartha Translation Network, both published by Shambhala. These summarize the various song cycles in Chapter 11 of the Life of Milarepa. Milarepa lived during the so-called Second Dissemination of Buddhism in Tibet, when Buddhism was reintroduced. Three pivotal figures in this Tibetan Renaissance were Rinchen Zongpo, who translated sutras, tantras and commentaries, Atiza, whose student Dramtan founded the Kandam school of Tibetan Buddhism, and Marpa the translator. The teacher of Milarepa, and himself regarded as student of Naropa. Marpa introduced tantric texts and oral instructions from the Bengali Siddha tradition into Tibet, and Marpa's purported connection with Naropa established the lineage of the Kakyu school, thereby reaching back to the Buddha himself. Thanks for watching.